This tutorial will show you how to create a profile and then generate a surface by using the revolve command. The first thing we'll do to make sure that we're working at the correct scale is under the file menu, we'll go down to properties and we'll look at the units. For this, we're going to be working in millimeters. The next thing that we'll set up is the grid so that we know what all of these lines mean. I would normally set up minor grid lines every one millimeter with major lines every 10, the snap spacing set at one millimeter. Okay. We'll begin drawing the profile using the control point curve. This can also be found a corresponding command in the drop down menu control points. Follow the prompts at the top left. Each time you initiate a command, it will ask you for information to be able to execute that command. We'll begin drawing the profile in the front view, making sure that we snap in to this line perfectly. To do that, it's very important that your modeling aids are set up with the grid snap on. You can leave the others as I have them set up here, turning off the smart check and leaving the gumball on. With the grid snap in place, we can be sure that we start the line on that axis. We'll then lay down the second point, also important that it's positioned perfectly in line with the first. To do that, we can rely on the grid snap or we can hold down the shift key, which will bring the cursor into line. After this, we can lay down points however you want to create the form of your vase. It's not important at this stage that you create the perfect form. It's more important that you lay down the points in the position that you want them. When you're done, press enter. We can now go back using the control points on command. We'll follow the prompts, selecting the curve. We now have access to the underlying points, which we can move to change the shape of the curve. When an object is selected, the gumball widget shows up. You can use the arrows to adjust the point in either direction. You can also click on the object and move it freely, and you'll have more freedom if you turn off the grid snap to get a smoother shape. To multiple select, just draw a box around the points and we can adjust those. And if you make any mistakes, you can always undo using the control Z command. When creating a vase, there's often a foot at the bottom for it to rest on, as I've drawn here. Once you're happy with the form, then we can hit escape to turn off the points. The next thing we'll do from that profile is we'll generate a surface using the revolve command. Under the surface menu, we'll go down to revolve. And again, we'll follow the prompts. Select the curve to revolve and press enter. Now we'll define the axis that we want it to revolve around. And that involves marking out two points. It is also important that the grid snap is turned back on so that we can snap in to that central axis perfectly. Lay down the first point and then hold shift to align the second point. Now we'll move into the top view. We can revolve by clicking and dragging the surface over. But within this command, we also have further options. One of them 
being the full circle. If you select that, it will complete the revolve at 360 degrees, which is a standard way to do that. In the perspective view, I'll click on the viewport title, select the ghosted view so that we can see what the form actually looks like. Now this gives us a good idea of the form, but notice that there has been no thickness defined. As it is now, this has a zero wall thickness, which is fine for a visual, but will not work as a physical object. We're going to go back a step, deleting the surface, and we'll now create a curve that runs along the inside of the profile. To do this, under the curve command, we'll use the command offset curve. The distance, we can adjust this. I'm going to set it at 4. I'll select the curve to offset. If you wish to change the distance, you can type in that value. We'll then define on which side of the curve we want that offset to occur. I'm going to move it onto the inside of the curve, and when you click with your mouse, the new curve will appear. We can adjust this curve by turning on the points again, but notice that the offset curve has far more points and that can make it very difficult to adjust. To fix this, we're going to go to the Edit menu, select the Rebuild command. Selecting the inside curve, we'll rebuild it with a smaller point count. I'm going to adjust this down to about 24 points, which should be more manageable in creating the new form. We can preview it as well, and that's so that we can make sure that the new curve is not going to stray too far from the old one. As soon as you change the points, it will deform, but we just want to make sure that it stays in line with the original. When you're happy with it, you can say OK. And now we'll turn the points on again. And we have fewer, which we can adjust more easily. Particularly, I wanted to adjust this point so that we don't end up with a recessed corner at the bottom of the base. The other thing that we can do is we can bring all of these points in line. We could do that manually, but we can also use, under the Transform menu, the Set XYZ Coordinates. We'll select the points that we're going to bring into line. The set points, we're going to be bringing them into line and then adjusting them along the Z axis. And you can see this at the bottom left of the front view. You'll turn off the X and Y, and you'll turn on the Z and say OK. That now allows you to adjust these points in line with each other along the Z. Oftentimes the vase will have a heavier bottom to make it more sturdy. So I'm going to adjust these higher up and then adjust the individual points from there so that we end up with a good profile. If you need to, you can also select and delete a point to get a nicer curve. When you're finished, hit Escape to turn off the points. We've defined the inside and the outside curves, but we also need to define the way that they will meet along the rim of the vase. To do that, the most simple way is under the Curve menu to use the Blend Curves Quick Curve Blend. Here we select the first and second curve, and the software generates a curve between them. Before moving on, these curves will need to be joined together using the Join command, and we'll select all three curves and press Enter. Now we have a single profile, 
that can be revolved as we did before. Going back a step, if you want, you can also create your own profile along the rim here using the control point curve. Most importantly, starting by snapping in to the end point. This means turning on the object snap and making sure that the end object snap is turned on. We'll start the curve here, generate a profile laying down points as you want, and snapping it back in to the next curve. Press Enter. Again, we can adjust these points. Here I'll turn off the grid snap to get more control over the shape. These will also be joined together, selecting the inside, the rim, and the outside to create a single curve. If we're going to go a step further, we can also rebuild this curve to give us a different number of points. Here I'll turn on the points to see what we have. Now I'm going to rebuild it with more points. With the rebuild command, I'm going to adjust the point count higher to around 80 points with the degree of 2. And we can preview that just to make sure that the new curve doesn't stray too far from the old one. The effect is that it smooths it. With the points on, I can now upset these points by selecting certain ones, adjusting them, or scaling them I'll also create a ridged surface along the side this new profile can now be revolved using the surface command revolve the grid snap should be turned back on so that we can define the axis. Hold shift to make sure that the axis is perfectly straight. We'll do the full circle to create the form. The difference this time is that we've defined the wall thickness of the vase. This object can now be realized as a manufactured object in a particular material. To get a full idea of what the vase will look like, we can change the view to the rendered view 